Well, hello everyone and welcome to our session today on Top 5 Barriers to World-Class Digital Marketing, sponsored by Sitecore. I'm Jerry Rackley, Chief Analyst here at Demand Metric. And before we jump into our topic, let me just cover some housekeeping details. We are recording this session and we'll send a link out via email that will come from our sponsor company, Sitecore. We'll also provide a copy of the slides in PDF form and we do welcome your questions. You will see on your console a question entry area. I'll be monitoring that. So please send your questions in during our session. We'll be glad to take those. So without further delay, let's proceed and talk about our agenda. First, we are tweeting, and you see the hashtag there at the top of the screen, hashtag Sitecore Live. And our presenter today, who I'll introduce in just a moment, is going to take us through the barriers, the secrets to breaking through those barriers, and seven stages of digital marketing maturity. And of course, as I said, we welcome your questions and we'll take those at the end of our session. Let me introduce our speaker to you. I'm delighted to present Susie McKee, who is Senior Product Marketing Manager at Sitecore. Susie's responsible for go-to-market strategies and sales enablement, primarily in the North American market for Sitecore. She comes to Sitecore with over 20 years of experience in marketing and marketing consulting. Before Sitecore, she led product marketing functions at Marketo, which is a leading marketing automation provider, and she also worked at Lyris. So we're going to have Susie present to us here in just a moment. Um, I first would like to spend just a minute talking a bit more about our sponsor, Sitecore. And you do see some information here on the screen. I invite you to visit the Sitecore website, which is www.sitecore.net. Uh, but Sitecore uh, helps marketers truly own the customer experience and customers engage with the brand. They have a number of very impressive customers, large and small, more than 3,000 of the world's leading brands, including brands that we're very familiar with, like American Express, Carnival Cruise Lines, Heineken, Lego, Microsoft, and others. So we appreciate our sponsor for bringing this session to you today. And Susie, with that, I think I'm going to try to click on the right buttons, and I'm going to turn things over to you and let you drive and take us through our presentation. So bear with me just one moment while I do that, and you should now be in control. Okay. Thank you, Jerry, and everyone on the line. It's really great to be with you here today. And let me fix my screen quickly. Okay, here we go. So what we're going to take a look at today is breaking through the top five barriers to world-class digital marketing. And I'm not talking so much about technology. I'll be speaking to you about the other aspects of marketing. So it'll be about people. We'll talk about processes and really about organizational change. So we are coming at this from the perspective of how do you improve your business through marketing and how do you change your business to take advantage of what's coming? So right now, we are at the very beginning of a revolution. And if some of you maybe are attending Gartner's Symposium and IT Expo this week in Orlando, you heard Gartner roll out a new phrase, and that is the digital industrial economy. And marketing, of course, plays a major role because so much of our communications with customers and prospects is happening digitally. And those interactions fuel transactions or sales, which, of course, fuel a business. So our audience, the people we are trying to reach as marketers, that audience is becoming absolutely inundated. And as marketers, we are also inundated with all of the technology and channels that are available to us. And it's really, it's not a great place to be. And we're sort of at this tipping point where the noise has gotten so loud that it's really canceling out most of the good interaction that digital marketing makes possible. As marketers, we are used to doing mass segmentation, but that really doesn't work anymore. Mass on top of mass really just adds to the noise. So if we want to be relevant, we've got to be specific to one individual. With that one individual, with whom we are engaging over digital channels. So the other thing that is happening is that this industry has really matured and the technology is starting to mature, which is very good for marketers. Web content management systems have become commoditized, meaning 
all the vendors pretty much have the same set of features and they all pretty much work. So vendors are starting to differentiate as well. And what Sitecore has done has added capabilities that are really absolutely necessary for digital marketing and cross-channel marketing and enabling content that is relevant to the individual. And this is applicable no matter what content management system you're using. You've got to be relevant to the individual. So what is customer experience? This is really what's required for this revolution in digital marketing. Customer experience is really all the, the interactions we are having with our customers and prospects that are happening digitally. And to do this, you've got to have an integrated platform. You can't waste valuable time and resources cobbing together systems and data sources that simply weren't designed to work together. Content management now must have cross-channel ability, email, including web, social media, and even print. You also need, need to be able to capture absolutely everything about individual users' data. So I'm not talking about web logs from uh, 1995, for those of you who are around them. But even modern analytic systems currently really basically run off old technical information that's being captured. And we've really got to be able to capture behavioral data. What is that particular person doing? How long are they doing it? What were the psychological triggers that worked for them? What channels are they um, interacting with you on? We've really got to have rules-based and predictive personalization, which I'll talk more about later. We need to have automation. And, and I don't mean automation in terms of an automated sequence for a mass segment of an audience, but for one specific individual. And then you need to have the business intelligence analytics that go beyond traditional web analytics and really allow you to optimize all of this. If you don't have that, all of this, which I realize sounds probably like a lot, if you don't keep ahead of your competitors, you're going to get trampled. And there's just no way around it. It happens very slowly, and then all of a sudden there's this burst, a huge change. And this has happened um, with a lot of different technologies. And I use televisions as an example, which probably seems a bit antiquated now, but um, they were introduced um, to the market in the mid to late 1930s. And they really didn't explode till a couple of decades after that in, in the late 1950s. But within a matter of five or six years, every household had a TV. So the same thing is going to happen. It, and it's going to be pressured by your competitors. If you don't start to move now, your competitors are going to trample you. So just two quick slides about Sitecore. Jerry gave us a very nice introduction. Um, Sitecore actually began as a web content management system in 1995. So today we offer that fully integrated customer experience platform that combines the web, analytics, email, social media, and all of the digital marketing tools in a single platform. We are a recognized leader in this space by Forrester and Gartner. And these are just um, a few of our, um, uh, a few of the organizations that use Sitecore. And they actually range all the way from small school systems to some of the largest organizations in the world. And there are 30,000 websites that now run on Sitecore. So now let's get into our main topic. So where are you now in the revolution? So my first question is, where are you when the revolution happens? Where is your marketing organization going to be? It's, it's, this revolution is, is going to happen, and it's going to happen quickly. So to get started, you really need to know where you are now, as well as where you need to go. And this is the starting point for our discussion. So this is a customer experience maturity model that Sitecore has developed and been using with our customers for the past 18 months. You could also call it a digital maturity model, again, because that experience is occurring online. And there are seven stages that we've defined in reaching full customer experience maturity. On the left here is Initiate, and that's pretty baseline. Those are organizations that have uh, maybe just a brochure website. The next stage is Radiate, and that means you've got a brochure website Plus, you're probably getting out through multiple channels, but it's disconnected. Align. Align means that you are now aligned with your strategic and marketing objectives. So you don't just have a website. 
you actually know exactly what effect you're driving and what impact marketing is having on the business. So it's a whole lot easier to talk to a CEO or CMO instead of just saying, yes, we're doing marketing and here's all the activity. When you are in this align phase, you are actually able to speak to the objectives that marketing is helping to drive for the overall business. Optimized, it's a whole lot more than just A-B and multivariate testing, although we'll talk a little bit more about that later. And then nurture. So you've got people in your funnel in the front door. When you're nurturing, you're keeping them there. And keeping in them there for a long time. It's nurturing them all the way through the funnel and then keeping them as your customer. And then that next phase is engaged. We nurture to make sure that our customers and prospects stay engaged. And we do this with email. We can also do it with marketing automation. But you can carry a one-to-one -one dialogue because you know that person and you know them individually. And finally, this nirvana here on the right is lifetime customers. That's where our customers won't buy from anyone else and we actually can continue to earn revenue from that group. So to help you understand where you are, Psychor actually has an online assessment that we provide at no charge, and I'll, I'll share the URL with you a little bit later. It's a short self-assessment. It's about 10 questions. And on the right here, you'll see what the results look like. It's really easy to take, um, and it's a, it includes not only sort of um, pinpointing where your organization is, but it also includes some recommendations on what you can do next to move up through that funnel. So we also have an in-depth assessment. And this is about 75 questions. And our um, consulting team inside Sitecore actually does this with some of our customers in person. And their results look a little bit different simply because this is a much more in-depth assessment than the online version. And what we produce is, is um, something similar to this. So this is the seven stages of customer experience, and this is from a real customer, and we did the in-depth assessment with them about a month ago. It was one of the largest think tanks in the U.S., and they were still in this initiate and radiate stage. So even, they, even though they were out in multiple channels, they weren't completely aligned with their business objectives, and they weren't optimizing to what they could really be doing. So we worked with them on that first day to figure out where they were in their maturity and then also develop recommendations or a roadmap so they knew exactly what to do next. So just to give you an idea, we've been running this survey, um, for, again, for about 18 months. And when you receive this deck, you can look at this in, in more detail. So these are, this is a result from over 500 organizations. And you'll notice, which, I, which we found really interesting, is that the majority of organizations are really just at the beginning of that maturity model. Um, so uh, a, a big number is over in that initiate stage, and of course the next largest group is in the radiate stage. So they've got a, a, a website and they're out through multiple channels, but they're not integrated, they're not connected, and they're not aligned with their business objectives. And very few are actually nurturing. They really aren't using automation and email as well as they should. So after you take the survey online, you can actually compare and see where you fall and also compare your organization to how your industry is doing as a whole. Uh, you can also use this ebook, and I'll share the URL for that toward the end as well. And the ebook actually goes into a lot more detail on um, what are the next steps you need to take. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more in this presentation. But it's one thing to know where you are, but of course one of the one of the bigger barriers is not knowing what to do next. So you'll find some really good um, recommendations in here from our consulting team as to what are the the next steps that you need to take. Okay, so let's take a look at what the barriers are to moving up in maturity. So these aren't the only barriers. But what we found during the time we've running, been running the assessment both online and in person with our customers is that these five are the most common areas where they are having difficulties. And the reason we do this 
Um, SciCore, of course, offers a technology platform, but we are very aware that just having technology does not solve all of our marketing problems. Um, you know, there are a lot of um, parts to being successful with your digital marketing that go way beyond the digital technology that you're using. Um, and these are the barriers that we're really finding our customers are coming up against. You'll see a lot are really not technology or tool related. Some are, but they're really more related to organizational issues, budget, um, time pressures, resources, lack of resources, and things like that. So this is what we're going to go through, these five. And some of the things I'm going to share with you, you're going to need to review in more detail when you receive the deck because they are step by step. And then some of it is big, big picture types of things like organizational change. And we'll talk about how to get people motivated during the change. So the big one that we are hearing from people is that they don't know what to do next. So there's a lot of fear and uncertainty. You know, what processes do we have to put in place? What do we do next? What should our next move be? Basically, what should our roadmap be? Another big one is restricted budget or we don't have enough people. Another is pressure for short-term gains. So as marketers, we are all under pretty severe pressure to be successful and get short-term gains. So it's really difficult, especially for any publicly owned company, to kind of be looking out um, 18, 24 months ahead. Another one that's related to the top two is not enough time. I'm sorry, not enough people, time, and resources. And then finally, how do we manage this change in a, large, in a large organization or even a small one? And it really depends a lot on the culture in your organization. So we're going to talk a little bit about different models for change, too, that you can consider. So let's dive deeper into the first barrier, a lack of process or model of understanding. What model do we use to get through this time? We talked about fear of the unknown. A lot of this is based on fear of the unknown because we don't know what to do. We don't know what order to do it in. What is our strategy? What is our tactics? You know, if you're working on a brochure website, that's, that's pretty easy. If you are churning out emails, that's pretty easy. But what about when you try and connect your website to your email? And what about cross-channel personalization? You know, oh my gosh, this sounds very scary. It's all new. So here's what you can do to tackle fear of the unknown. So fear of the unknown comes in three parts. There's the people part. How do we change our organization and learn new skills? How do you keep them calm and moving forward and motivated? And then there's the marketing processes. What do we need to change? What do we need to integrate? And of course, is there, there's the technology. How do we migrate a legacy system? And how do we do cross channel integration? How do we feasibly implement without disrupting what we're doing today? So our first bit of advice is don't be a pioneer. Pioneers are people who unfortunately have targets on their back. And what I want you to do is go out and find a vendor or an agency that's experienced in cross-channel digital marketing. You need to find someone with experience. And if you're working with an agency that doesn't have this experience, you need to find a new one. And this isn't about technology or implementation. You, you, you may be working with a technology company to help you implement your systems. But you can really have someone with more of a um, strategic bent um, to help you through this other side of it. And you need to start from the business objective, not from marketing and not from technology. And I'll show you a process in a little bit how to do that. So these are some of the things you're going to need to cover. And these are actually, um, each one of these um, shapes here represents workshops that our site core consulting arm actually does for some of our customers. And the scoping workshop on the left here, that really covers um, the sort of wider question. What could you possibly do if, if every, you know, pie in the sky, if everything was wide open, you had all these tools available. If you had Sitecore's customer engagement platform, what are all the things you could accomplish? And then we help our customers develop um, a, a new form of analytics. And we call this engagement the engagement value score. 
where what you're doing is monitoring the behavior of people on your website and really wrapping in where they came from, how did they get there, what did they do when they got there to really understand how engaged they are. Because it's one thing to be able to measure an individual campaign or keyword or something by whether it drove someone to your site, but you really need to understand how that activity drove, how engaged they were on your site. If they came to your site and left right after, you really gained nothing there. So engagement value is sort of a, a metric. We like to describe it um, as a way to have an a, a agnostic way to measure your visitor's engagement, no matter what channel or campaign a person came to your website through. So just like um, many of us individually, we create a, a portfolio. You may have an investment portfolio where you you know, balance your stocks and bonds and real estate and that kind of thing. You need to have a balanced portfolio in your marketing as well across different channels. So then we get into profiling and personas and predictive, predictive personalization. We get into automation, email campaigns, make sure we get a very clear understanding of what your user journey is, and bringing all of that together. So these are, these are all the things you're going to need to be considering. So this is a um, slide with an awful lot of content. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but, and, and you'll get this, um, so you'll be able to look at it more in depth. But as far as process, the first thing to realize is that sponsorship is really important. And a few of you on this call may be in the position to lead the charge, but many of you are going to need to market internally. And we have found that the biggest cause of failure in trying to shift over to basically a digital marketing mindset is, is lack of sponsorship and keeping your sponsor motivated and enthusiastic. So you've got to manage up and you need to be able to help that sponsor get through the tough times. Another thing that's really important at, at this stage or at this barrier is what are all the preparation and implementation steps? So we've got 17 listed here and they are in sequence. Um, everything from obviously starting out with vision down through defining personas, defining your digital marketing goals, training on the system, implementing the system, all the way down through predictive personalization and marketing automation. So these are very specific steps you can go through that we counsel our customers on. So let's take a look at another barrier. Okay, restricted budget. How about a restricted budget? When What can you do when you feel you don't have enough money or people as resources to actually make an accomplishment like this happen? So there are two ways that you can motivate. So I like the model of the trapeze. Um, the trapeze model is essentially where you've got a trapeze artist who's standing on a trapeze on one side, and on the other side is this safe platform. But there's this huge swing in between and a huge drop in between if that trapeze artist fails. So what you've got to do start a fire on the trapeze that they're on or they're never going to leave. So this is a metaphor for obviously, you know, things remaining as they are today. So you start a fire on that platform, you set a net up in between to make sure that the transition, you know, the swing across is safe. And then you make it safe and comfortable when they get to the other side. So they want to stay there and not go back. So what that means here is when you've got a restricted budget, and occasionally things can get painful when you're, help, when you're trying to manage through that budget. You need to help management visualize what is the negative impact. You need to help people realize that going forward is a lot better than going backwards. And the way to look forward is to build the business case and map your objectives. So what you're doing in digital marketing will impact your business objectives. So let's take a look at what that means. So EasyJet is the largest airline in Europe, and it's kind of like our Southwest or JetBlue here in the United States. And EasyJet is a site for customer. They made one change with their customer experience platform with Sitecore, initially because they wanted to test it. 
And what they did was they customized their home page. So if you go to their home page and you wanted to fly from, say, Copenhagen to Berlin, and you go back again a second time and you enter that just to see if the results have changed. Well, the third time you come in, the experience is customized with banners offering these specials to fly from Copenhagen to Berlin. So this one customization, I'll read this to you. During the EasyJet January sale, EasyJet's biggest to date, our personalized homepage was helping sell two planes every minute. So that was pretty remarkable. They saw a 20% uplift by one small change, and they took advantage of this low-hanging fruit to get the staff motivated and do more. Another example is Australian Super. So this organization is obviously in Australia. And Australia, in Australia, they use private retirement plans. So I think there are about five of these organizations. And Australian Super is the largest, and they run on Sitecore. And this is their default homepage. So if I'm in my 60s and getting close to retirement, hopefully, thinking about how my husband and I are going to retire, this young woman, you know, kind of yelling at me here, really doesn't um, resonate with me and my stage for retirement planning. So what Australian Super did was they customized just one part of that home page, a banner here. Let's see. So they customized that one banner. This was their low-hanging fruit. And they got a 60% uptick in new member acquisition. And using other parts of the platform, they got to a point where 48% of their transactions were being completed online, which was another business goal for them. So these are the kind of business results you can gain really quickly and leverage to help keep, keep your team motivated and help them visualize where you're going. So we talk about the trapeze metaphor, metaphor. This type of activity here, this change is really low risk, it's low effort, but it makes that bigger transition much safer. Okay, let's talk about mapping drivers to business objectives. So upper management really wants to see the bottom line. How is this change going to help me in our organization? So one of the things we can do, and this comes from balanced scorecards and performance improvement technology. So you start out with a strategic theme. And in this example, it's raving fans. So every successful organization has two, maybe at the most, three strategic themes. So if your company is Lexus or BMW, your strategic theme is probably highest quality. If you're Apple, your, st your strategic theme may be innovation. So every company has a strategic theme. The strategic objectives are more on the ground level. What do we need to do to make that theme a reality? What part of that belongs to marketing? Growing new organic leads, increasing marketing share. What does your digital marketing have to do across channels to achieve that strategic thing? From social activities to website to email, whatever it is, what specifically do you need to do to support that thing? And then you can show a correlation between when the marketing objective grows, it impacts the strategic ob objective, which impacts the theme. So this is just an example of how our consulting team um, does some of this with Sitecore customers. Many of you have probably gone through an exercise like this at some point in your careers, um, starting out with post-it notes and kind of, you know, pie in the sky, putting up every idea you can think of under the planet, and then um, using affinity grouping to really take what has amounted to tons of ideas to boil it down to what's most important. Um, so this is just an example of how we use that exercise to come up with the engagement value score. Um, and for this particular organization, what they did is they put, uh, the Sitecore system enables this, where they assign different um, points to their digital goals. So for example, a referral may be worth five points, or an email registration is worth 10 points. And, um, this is just showing you a little bit of how an engagement value score um, is utilized in, in the metrics. So then we map the changes that are needed into a roadmap. 
So this is where we're saying, <coughs> excuse me, that of course there are technical changes in preparation, but there are people changes in preparation as well. So this is a roadmap, and what you want to do is keep this roadmap posted and stay as transparent as you can. You want to post it in the hallway on a bulletin board. You want to communicate old school, not, not just digitally. You want to be completely transparent and open. And this isn't only helpful for management to, to show them um, the successes you're having, but it really helps keep everyone on your team motivated as well, no matter what functional level they're in to see that the changes that they're making and the effort that they're putting into it is really making a difference. It's moving the dial. So the other part or benefit of transparency, of course, is that when there is a problem or a challenge, you want to let everyone know what you're doing about it. OK, so let's talk about the next barrier, pressure for short-term gain. Every manager has that. It's a big fear. So if you know, we're going to go off in this new direction. Well, am I going to be able to make my numbers? That's a very real and legitimate concern. So here are some solutions when you're operating um, within this barrier. The things you can do are remember the vision. Keep those implementation and measurement maps visible out where everyone can see it. And make sure that those digital goals are driving so that you can actually see the marketing objective change. And you need to do your regular traditional analytics. You need to, need to do A, B, and multivariate testing. And then go out and use those analytics to show how your efforts are driving engagement. And we talked a little bit about engagement value as a metric. So what I'm showing you here is just a particular dashboard inside Sitecore. We call this the MOM, M-O-M. -M. We like acronyms. And it stands for Marketing Optimization Matrix. So on the left here, um, on the vertical scale, those are the visits to the website. Um, I'm sorry, uh, the value uh, is um, on the left-hand side, and the visits are on the bottom here. And the dots in the middle are the campaigns. So what this is showing is which campaigns produce the most value and the most visits. So it lets you know exactly if a campaign is in a certain quadrant here. It, it helps you figure out what to do with that particular campaign. Do I repeat it? Do I reproduce it? Do I increase traffic to a particular campaign? Do I retire it because it's just dead? And you'll see here on the bottom left, these are, um, uh, we call them the inerts. And this is where most campaigns are going to end up. These are campaigns that are producing low engagement value. We talked about that engagement value metric, low visits. But some of these campaigns may have only been running for a short period of time. So. This is just a tool to help you um, sort of determine what should your next action be. Um, up in the upper right there, we want all of our campaigns to be in the upper right. Um, those are the heroes. And those are the campaigns that are producing very high engagement value. So people coming through your site are um, engaged in activities. And we've assigned um, points to those activities. So they're really driving high engagement. People are very active on our site. And these campaigns are also bringing in an awful lot of visits. So those are highly valuable. If you want to learn more about this, I know I'm touching on it lightly, the engagement value, but you can go to Sitecore's website and search for keywords under resources. Um, you can look at quality versus quantity. You can search for engagement value. Um, you can also search for marketing optimi optimization and learn a little bit more there. So let's talk about capturing quick wins with low-hanging fruit. We already talked about EasyJet and Australian Super, how by making pretty simple adjustments to their home, page, home pages, the results were, were pretty fantastic. So I'll tell you a quick story. About a year ago, one of our consultants was up at Canada Cooperative, um, which is, I believe, the second or third largest insurance company in Canada. And on the first day, we did that scoping workshop and um, you know, really answered the question, what's possible? And we mapped out their themes with goals. And then also on that first day, we showed them how they could probably capture low-hanging fruit with personalization. So similar to EasyJet getting the 20% uplift and Australian Super getting the 60% uplift, on that very first day, we showed them how to do that. And this is rules-based personalization. We're just looking at things like Q3 
keywords, really stuff that any um, analytics system should be able to track. But Sitecore tracks everything. But in this example, we're going to look at keywords. Um, I'm going to show you an example of a Sitecore customer called New World Safari. And this is a travel company that organizes safaris all over the world. Um, they use several niche sites to drive traffic to their main site. And then when visitors arrive at their main site, they use rules-based personalization. So here is their website. This is what the default home page looks like. Um, so if you were someone who was looking for a particular safari and you come to this page, but say you're not interested, you know, you had typed in the URL directly, and you look at the snow and, you, and, and this airplane here, and, and maybe you're afraid of flying and um, don't like cold climates. So it's not really appealing to you. You're interested in something else. Um, so let's show you what personalization could look like if this uh, visitor had come in through Google. So person's on Google. They type in luxury primate safari. You know, they want to see gorillas. They put that in the Google, and luckily this organization has very good SEO, so they pop right to the top. And when someone clicks on that because of the keyword that's being used, primate, this is the home page that they arrive at. They get a primate, and they get to view what safaris, what safaris are available um, in which they can um, be sure and, and see primates. So now they're on the safari page that's serving content specific to what they're interested in simply by personalizing on that one keyword. And this creates a really nice experience. So this visitor feels like, wow, this company, is they understand what I'm interested in. And they're actually serving me content um, that, that um, applies to what I'm interested in. And if this visitor comes back later, the site is going to remember them. So again, this is another example. It's a really simple way you can capture some low-hanging fruit with personalization. So what about limited resources? Not enough people, not enough time. Uh, maybe you've got to do your old job while, while transitioning your, your skills um, to a new one. And maybe personalization and automation all sound great, but oh my gosh, you know, we all have trouble keeping up as it is with all the content that we need to produce. One of our customers actually has 15,000 pages. So um, how, how do you keep up with that? How do you automate when it's already tough? So first, you need to focus. If you're going to do personalization, there's a way to make it very focused to work easily and make it easy to maintain. You need to stay focused on content, and I'll show you how to do that. You also need to focus on retention. Um, a little bit less on acquisition, which is really hard for some of us. Often, though, we don't focus on retention, and we're sort of stuck in this vicious cycle of acquisition and churn, which is very costly and unsustainable. So start by looking at your site and figuring out which spots are the best to be customized. So some of the examples we looked at, the spots were actually um, you know, very large graphics on the home page. But you can also do it um, on any page within your site, actually. You only need one to three spots. You only need to personalize one to three spots. So remember that 20 to 60% uplift. That was achieved only by personalizing one spot on the home page. So you need to figure out what your key spots are. And you need to create visitor segmentation. So some people call these personas, or you can also refer to them as your visitor segments. If you know your customers, you, your salespeople know your customers, you should be able to create something like this really quickly. You don't have to hire a consultant to come in. You don't need to be doing months of research. You can do this with a lot of telephone calls, um, surveying your sales reps. You really should be able to do this quite quickly. You need to get an understanding of who your personas and visitor segments are. And then you use this. This is something called a digital relevancy map. And it helps you map relevant content to each persona. So across the top here are the stages in the visitor journey. And down the left-hand side are the personas. For each one of these, you will have the intent for the content 
at that stage. You want to answer, how are you going to persuade this person? And we'll talk about that next, on the next slide. And what action do you expect them to take? So when you capture it this way, you're able to prioritize what's in here. So you're not sort of doing um, what, what we sometimes call random acts of content. You know, I know for a lot of you, creating content is a really big line item in your marketing budget. So this is a way to get very focused and not just continuing to churn stuff out, um, but getting very specific to what your visitor needs to move them into the next stage. So another thing you need to figure out is what are those stages that your visitors are moving through. And it's going to be slightly different for each organization. You know, if you're an e-commerce site, the journey, your customer journey obviously is going to look much different than a visitor to a government site, for example. So figure out your stages and how you're going to move each person through them. And, and your sales folks will love this, how to accelerate that so they move through those stages faster. What do they need at each stage? And put that content up first and that will help you prioritize. So I know you've got limited resources and limited time. There's no such thing as unlimited anything and um, certainly not in marketing. So each of your strategies needs to be really focused. And these are just two books here um, that we like to recommend and they really help with that notion of focus. Um, this author is a professor at Arizona State University and he has done an incredible amount of research really around understanding what are triggers that move people through the different stages. So, for example, at the beginning of a customer journey, most of us really rely on proof and validation from our peers. Where at the end of a customer journey, so for example, if you're a commerce site, you may use triggers like shortages or scarcity of the product. So for each stage in the customer journey, you really need to understand what the triggers are that compel your visitor to the next stage, and then create content specifically that will move them to the next stage. So you need to get focused. Okay, this is our final barrier, organizational change. So you're moving on, you're taking this, this big step, you know, moving beyond siloed marketing which is hard because that's, that's how we all grew up. Um, you know, in 1995 when Psych first started, we were using just web logs for analytics. Um, but a lot of marketing organizations, um, of course, as new technologies started to come to the forefront, you know, we just started adding email or social media came, came in and we maybe added on, um, uh, brought in another vendor or mobile devices and cross-channel marketing and then video and all these different technologies came in and as each technology came in it was totally separate it was in its own silo it had its own anal analytics um, so as a result most marketing organizations have organizational silos and also functional skill silos and analytic silos so it's very hard to even measure you've got to change your culture and look at things holistically so instead of everyone operating silos and I know you've heard this from other um, at, at other pr presentations or, or um, research you're doing on marketing, we really need to get away from siloed marketing. There are, there are handoffs that need to be occurring between each of your channels and your functions because your audience is traveling across those channels. So if you need to in larger organizations, it does really help to have a consultant on board. They're often called organizational dynamics consultant. consultants. You really need to have a transparent implementation process. So in each organization that PsyCor has been involved in helping them through this process, the CEO would stand up and say, you know, this is very important, it's critical to our, our success, and we're going to go through this change, and it's critical for the whole organization. And then the CMO would stand up and explain how it's going to happen. And you want to keep it published, you want to keep it updated, you want to squash those rumors. So you need to motivate your managers, manage up, as well as everyone on the team that's involved. One thing that really helps is letting people, individuals on the team, know, letting them know that this change will actually make their jobs better. They're going to be gaining new skills for their career. 
um, and they're not going to get outmoded. And something for management that's really important um, is that digital marketing is really going through an evolution. And one example you can use is looking back at um, the, the change that ERP caused in manufacturing. So manufacturers could all of a sudden track a manufactured part through the whole life cycle. And they could truly get to an understanding of what the ROI is of that product. It completely transformed manufacturing and significantly improved it in the US. So that same kind of transition is happening now with digital marketing. So finally, I can't end a presentation to marketers without a call to action. So I wanted to share with you those URLs that I had promised. So this is the ebook that I had shared with you earlier. It goes into more detail on what the different stages are of digital marketing and what you need to do to get through. So it's sitecore.net slash get optimized. And again, you'll get this deck, so if you didn't jot this down, that's OK. And then this is a URL to that assessment that I talked about, which is on our site. This is that quick assessment, 10 questions. Um, where you can do a self-assessment of where you are in your digital marketing, and then it will include some high-level recommendations. So sitecore.net slash CX maturity model. So with that, I want to thank you for your time and um, turn it back over to Jerry for questions. Well, thank you, Susie. That was a great presentation. Uh, very helpful. And yes, we have questions. I just wanted to say um, how much I like your trapeze model. I've never heard arson recommended as part of a marketing strategy, but I think that's great. It's very clever. Um, okay, so questions. One of them is this. Uh, is this possible for a small startup company with a small budget to do what you have suggested? Um, I would say yes, and actually, if you're a smaller organization, I think you would find that it may be much easier than if you were coming from a large organization where there um, are a lot of systems in place, um, larger staff to transition. So, you know, the benefit of being small is that um, you really can work on things like processes and organizational change much easier because you're not having to translate that across a large organization. So um, it's not so much the budget question, I think, as, as we're talking about people and um, process and organizational change. You've, you've kind of got a leg up if you're able to today um, get started on this process earlier versus kind of revisiting um, old processes and, and having to change them. So I, I think you're probably in a really good spot. Okay, perhaps uh, easier to manage the scope then in a smaller organization than a bigger one. Yes, I think so. Okay, great. Um, okay, here's another one. You said in your presentation that one of the biggest causes of failure is lack of sponsorship internally. So what's your advice to all those who are listening about how to go get that sponsorship? Yeah, well, one of the things we talk a lot about is, you know, Marketing is making this incredible shift um, to hopefully transitioning from an expense center to what we'd love to see as a profit center. So we talked a lot about mapping um, digital objectives up to the overall company objectives. I mean, that, that's what's really important. We don't want to be doing marketing for marketing's sake. We want to be doing marketing that meet very specific business objectives. And that's when, when you're able to talk about how marketing helps move the dial on those business objectives, you know, not talking about the tactics, but really what was achieved at the business level. Um, those um, sponsors can't help but not listen to you because that's, that's what they're concerned with every day. That's how they are measured. Um, so I think you, you'll find if you can sort of shift your your language and really demonstrate how you're wanting to make this change to support those um, those business objectives. Um, you'll find that those those sponsors are going to listen a lot more closely. Very good advice. Thank you. And I think we have time for one more question. And so here is another. You uh, were talking about creating a roadmap, 
And, and during that, you mentioned communicating old school, recommended actually communicating old school, not digitally. And that seems a little counterintuitive given the topic of our presentation. So can you maybe give some examples or talk about that a little bit further? Yeah, um, it, it's really, it boils down to, um, you know, having um, a common purpose and getting everyone onto the same page. And um, many of you are probably involved in website design projects um, where you you work diligently on, you know, determining who the, the right personas were for your website. And all the folks working on that website um, had those personas. And the personas, you know, many of us kind of made posters and hung them up all through the physical office. And it's sort of that same idea um, simply by taking a, you know, using a, a visual tool um, and sharing visually um, kind of what the goals are and what the roadmap is and c consistently updating that. So it's not meant so much to be counterintuitive, but to sort of go step back a little bit and think about, you know, when you're in your office every day, when you're working with your coworkers, um, you know, if you're all walking by the same, um, same visual on the wall that shows exactly where you are in this process and how far you need to go, it's just a very powerful way to make sure everybody's on the same page. Now it's a bit of a challenge if you, if all your teams are not in the same office, of course. But um, as much as possible, do try and use sort of those physical assets versus digital um, to get everyone on the same page. Well, Susie, I just want to say thank you for sharing your expertise with us today, uh, and I want to thank everyone who joined us and is listening in, and those who will listen in through the recorded version. We hope that you found this helpful. Uh, I want to thank Sitecore for sponsoring the session and encourage you, if you want to explore this subject in greater detail and grab those resources that Susie referenced, please visit the Sitecore website. That is sitecore.net. So uh, to close, once again, thanks, everybody. I hope you found this helpful. Please send us some feedback and do let us know how we can help you. Goodbye, everybody, and thanks, Susie.